I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I didn't know if I would find people who were um, sort of remiss and a little sad that their loved ones were overseas. I didn't know if I would find kids who were um, a little bewildered and confused and you know, kind of down, you know? And that's kind of what I thought. I thought I would see a lot of kids who were, who were sad and you know, looking to have their spirits lifted by you know, maybe seeing a Titan, but you know, they were you know, proud of their parents and everything, but just you know, hoping they would come home safe and just really worried. And I didn't find that at all. I mean, you know, they were definitely worried, but you know, these people were, I think, some of the most inspired, most wonderful people I think I've ever met. People that were left behind, all the children and the wives and, and a lot of the spouses of, um, of the soldiers over there. I mean, they were, they were the nicest people in the world and they were so supportive of their family members and, you know, and they were happy. They were like, you know what, you know, my husband or my father or, you know, whoever it is, respected person that's over there is, is fighting for our way of life. And I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud that, that, that my daddy is the one that's doing this, you know. And that's what I heard over and over again. I was a little overwhelmed because, I mean, I play a sport for a living. I'm a professional athlete. I mean, I condition my body and I hone my skills to play a game on Sunday afternoon that, you know, brings a lot of joy to a lot of different people and we do a lot in the community and it's a great occupation. I think it's the best job in America. But, you know, these people, their job is, you know, to preserve our way of life. They condition their bodies and they train and they hone their skills to make sure that we live free and we can, and I can play a sport for a living. And, you know, it was, it was a little overwhelming, the fact that, you know, they were so glad to see me and I was like, no, I'm so glad, I'm so happy and I'm so proud of your parents. I want you all to realize um, last year we had a couple of guys come up here and, um, and believe me, we had easily 20 guys who were all vying for the spot to come up here to speak to the troops and the people up here. At, uh, I mean, we just really, really, really are enamored with our armed forces. I mean, just the sacrifice, the commitment. I mean, to excellence, to preserving our way of life. I thought about my dad. I mean, you know, my dad was a sergeant in the Army station in Killeen, Fort Hood, Texas, during the whole Vietnam thing. You know, that, that's, it kind of brought things home because my dad was in that situation 30 years ago. And it's like, man, you know, if my dad doesn't return or somebody, you know, then I'm not here. Just like the repercussion of, of the events of our history rings so true when you go on to a military base and you realize that you know, most of the people on this base are not here they're fighting, they're over in Iraq. That's why the base seems a little desolate. That's why everyone's spouse is not here, because they're entrenched in battle. And that's real, that, that's reality. Everyone has heard of the 101st Airborne Screaming Eagles. I mean, everyone knows who they are. I mean, across America, they're famous. And they're the ones who are gonna bring back more medals of honor than probably anybody, any other unit, you know, of our armed forces. And uh, it, was, it was truly an honor to be there. And I thought, these, this is one of the experiences that I'll always remember. I was just, overwhelmed to have been a part of that and I was just I was just thankful I was I was thankful to them and you know my prayers have gone out and continue to go out to them